Hey, I'm Prof. Omar from Prof. Omar Math here on YouTube, and I'm guest hosting on Professor Michael Penn's channel. Today is the third solution in a series of solutions to the Putnam 2018 problem number A6. So let's dive into the problem and get a sense of what's going on with it. So the problem involves four points in the plane. There are four points that are no three of which are collinear, so they sort of sit like this. You have a point here, 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 and here, say generically, maybe A, B, C, and D. All right, and you're given the information that the square of the lengths between any pair of these is a rational number itself. And you're trying to prove that the area of triangle ABC divided by the, triangle of a, the area of triangle ABD is itself a rational number. So the approach we're going to take today for this particular problem is a linear algebraic approach. And so the idea is to try to represent the area of these two triangles in terms of linear algebra expressions involving vectors between these particular points. So think of these points lying in the plane and then representing each of the pairs of points, their lengths as lengths of actual vectors. If you do that, then you want to transfer somehow this expression into something involving squares of these lengths of the vectors that you have. So try to do that, piece these two ideas together, and see if you can come up with some ideas toward a solution before we actually present an idea here. All right, so let's go ahead and start presenting an idea. So to begin, what we're going to do is draw in some vectors. The vectors emanating from A to these other points B, C, and D, and we're going to give these vectors names, maybe U, V, and W. And I'll often omit the actual vector notation on top of each of these vectors and just refer to them as U, V, and W respectively. All right, so we can actually express these areas in terms of linear algebraic expressions in these vectors. For example, if we look at the area of triangle ABC, that's actually half the area of this parallelogram right here that's formed by translating AB so that A coincides with C and then closing that up. All right, the area of that parallelogram is up to a positive or negative sign. The determinant of the matrix formed whose columns are the vectors U and V themselves. And this is something that one typically learns in a linear algebra class. So the area of the triangle is half that. And again, this is up to a positive or negative sign. Now similarly, the area of ABD is a similar expression that involves the vectors AB and AD instead. So it'll be one half of the determinant of the matrix formed by those two vectors, which are the vectors U and W. Okay. So again, this expression is going to be the same as this expression up to a positive or negative sign. And so if this expression here is a rational number, then this one is. So we'll work with this. We can get rid of these halves and just work with the determinants themselves. Now there's no information that's given in the actual problem that would make us think that this determinant ratio is actually rational. But what we can do is introduce a factor that will allow us to get at this expression. And it's kind of an interesting idea. And the idea is to multiply by a matrix that is the same matrix on the top of the bottom, but then introduces the squares of lengths. A way to do that is by multiplying by the matrix whose rows are u and v. Now if we do that, then the determinant of the top over the determinant of the bottom is actually the same as the ratio of determinants we had before because the determinant of this product is the product of the determinants, similar with what's happening in the denominator. And so the factor of the determinant of this first matrix will cancel out from the numerator and the denominator, leaving us with the expression we had beforehand. All right, but what's advantageous about this is, just we can, is that we can express this as the determinant. I'll use this notation for determinant now of something that involves dot products of these various vectors. Here we'll have u dot v, u dot u, sorry, then u dot v, v dot u, and v dot v, whereas on the bottom we'll have u dot u, 
u dot w, v dot u, and v dot w. Now, some of these expressions are already lengths of vectors involved in our diagram to begin with, which we know have squares that are rational numbers. For example, let's look at u dot u. u dot u is the square of the length of the vector u. So this thing here is actually ab squared. Similarly, v dot v is ac squared. And here we have that u dot u again. And so we know that these three pieces of the puzzle are actually rational numbers. We're given that right over here. Great, so now the question is what about these other expressions that involve dot products of pairs of different vectors in our diagram? So let's look for example at u dot v. So u dot v is the dot product of u and v. Right? And one of the things that we have at our disposal is these other three lengths involved having squares being rational numbers. Okay, so if we look at, for example, the piece with u dot v, we can actually extract it using this piece of the diagram involving a, b, and c respectively. So if we look at this picture, we have this vector u. If we look at the vector emanating from c to b, that vector itself is the vector u minus v. And we're given that this vector has length whose square is rational. But the square of this vector's length is the dot product of the vector with itself. And that's u dot u minus twice u dot v plus v dot v. Now we're given u dot u is a rational number, and same with v dot v. All right, but u minus v dot u minus v is the square of the length of bc, which is also a rational number. So all these three pieces are rational, which tells us then that this entire expression that's remaining here is rational, which means that u dot v itself is rational as well. So u dot v, which is the same as v dot u, is rational, and so this piece is rational here. And now we can use a similar argument to actually prove that these two expressions here are rational as well. For example, if you wanted to establish that u dot w is rational, we can look at this triangle with a, b, and d, and do a similar thing where we have u minus w dot u minus w instead of u minus v dot u minus v. If we do that, then using the fact that the square of bd's length is rational, we'll get this expression here, u dot u, a w dot w, and then the same thing we had here, minus 2u dot w, and so all these three pieces here will be rational, implying this is rational as well. And a similar thing with the last triangle that we have will give us that v dot w is rational as well. Okay, so in the expression that we're interested in, which is this here, which is the same as this expression up to multiplying by a positive or negative sign, we have all these entries here are rational. So we have a rational number in the numerator, actually we can explicitly write what it is. It's u dot u times v dot v minus u dot v squared, because u dot v and v dot u are the same, divided by u dot u times v dot w minus u dot w times v dot u. And each of these terms here are themselves rational numbers, so this entire thing is a rational number as well. All right, so a cool way to go about this problem that involved first translating everything into vector form, um, but then when you do that, you don't see squares of lengths, so you introduce this interesting matrix that you multiply by that'll then give you matrices whose entries involve squares of lengths of the actual diagram you start with. Now one thing to ask here is whether or not this full set of assumptions was needed to draw this conclusion. 
If you work through this actual proof, maybe you can come up with conditions that are looser than this that will still guarantee that the ratio of these areas are rational numbers. If you have ideas of things like this, definitely leave them in the comments below and so we can have a discussion about how loose you can make these conditions and still have this ratio of areas be rational. Great, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, definitely check out both Prof Penn's channel right here and my channel at Prof Omar Math. Leave comments on both involving this problem. And definitely check out both channels for more videos that are just like this on Putnam problems, solutions to them, solutions to problems in general, and actually explorations of undergraduate math as a whole. So thanks again for watching today's video. If you did, definitely subscribe to either Professor Michael Penn's channel or my channel or both, and click the like button in this video to support this channel.